The Packers won the toss. They won the football. Michael Kanan, the kickoff man at punter. And Mike McCarthy has Dewan Harris back to receive the backup running back. Averaging about 21 yards of return. Packers going for win number 11. Bucks trying for win number 3. And underway with Green Bay and Tampa Bay. Harris will take the ball in the end zone. Touchback 20-yard line for Aaron Rodgers. Yes, having an MVP-type season. And the NFL's all-time passer in terms of measuring the rating. In fact, he's so far ahead, Rondé, he could throw his next 245 passes all incomplete, and he would still be the NFL's all-time leading passer. I love that we have those kind of <laughs> stats available to us. Yes, he is a special player, Chris. We all know it. He's got the best release that I've ever seen in football. It'll be on display again today, I'm sure. And we'll listen for his voice because he had that cold. Sounds pretty good. He said this morning, I'll see how I feel with Eddie Lacy in the backfield from the 20. Minute 18! Minute just... And Lacey gets the carry and gets up to the 25. Looks like he got shoved back and we've talked about Rodgers and Lacey. Lacey's 60 yards away from back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. He's been bothered by an irritated eye because of a contact lens. That hip is a little bit better and good news on the offensive line. Brian Balaga passing the concussion protocol on second and five. It's Lacey. And Levante David again involved. They blow the whistle, so it'll be third and short. A Buccaneer defense much improved since the bye week. Without Jared McCoy, they're going to have to rely a lot on Jacquee Smith over there, defensive end number 56, to get some pressure. Clint McDonald helps in the middle, too. Mason Foster being back as an addition. And we all know Levante David is one of the best young linebackers in football. Expect a lot of activity out of him. Lacey for the third straight time, and no! The Bucks stop him on third and a yard and a half. Akeem Spence plugging up the middle. Akeem Spence in there at the nose tackle because Gerald McCoy is out. Comes up with a big stop on third down. If, you, if you're Lovey Smith, you're standing on this sideline. Right now, you're saying, couldn't get off to a better start. Three straight runs. See Akeem Smith right there in the middle, penetrating that double team. Get some help from Jacquees Smith. Good start for Tampa Bay. Bobby Rainey with Solomon Patton inactive, injured, back to receive the punt from Mastay. Now, they had special teams problems this year. Packer fans know about that from blocked kicks and returns. And Rainey has it and slips at the 32. Here comes a flag late. Looks like Leonard Johnson or one of the Packers, I should say one of the uh, Buccaneers, flag inside. Brandon Dixon is at the 30. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 29. 10-yard penalty, first down. Terry McCauley, our referee today. This is Leonard Johnson right here. And just at the end of the play, I mean, it's close to me. It looked to me it was like it was squarely on the side. But Terry McCauley is one of the good ones. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. He's refereed three Super Bowls, most of any active referee. McCarthy said, I'm familiar with Lovey Smith. I know his defenses are always ready to play. It's the Tampa Bay offense that Buck fans want to see with Doug Martin coming off his best game. 96 yards rushing last week. Josh McCott gives it to him. And the little guy gets up across the 21-yard line. You know, Chris, familiarity will play a big role in this game today. Obviously, Josh was in Chicago last year, played these guys twice. There's some other other factors here too. Uh, Evan Dietrich Smith was a center for Green Bay last year. They know each other, so some of that familiarity, head coach to head coach, should play a factor in this game today. Yeah, two. Martin again and gets up to about the 25-yard line. Both teams coming out running the football. You saw the numbers on. Josh McCown. He's got receivers, and of course, Mike Lennon has played through the course of this year as well. McCown is there because he can run around with a shaky offensive line, but they are talented at the receiver position. Yeah, there's two the guys ball. there in the middle, Vincent Jackson and Mike Evans, special, special players. Of note, though, DeMar Dotson again starting at left tackle for the Buccaneers. Anthony Collins, a big free agent. 
addition from last year, a healthy scratch. He's on the bench. Packers with six defensive backs on third and four. McCown from the pocket throws into coverage and incomplete. He was trying to get it to his tight end, Brandon Myers, but the coverage was good. And it'll be fourth down. Gives a good ball here. Just Brandon Myers tried to one-hand one it, put it in the coverage. Two, three and outs to start this game. And we'll see once the Packers get the ball back here. Mentioned in the open that they want to establish the running game. We'll see if they go back to that well again. Michael Kanan back to boot it away. Randall Cobb standing at the 30 for the Packers. It's a high kick. No fair catch. So the ball's out, but Cobb has it. He goes down inside the 30 of Green Bay. Packers with their second possession here after running it three straight times. Scoreless here. Just getting going at Temple Bay. This game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Book your little fare now at southwest.com. Back in Tampa Bay with Rodney Barber, Chris Myers, and the Packers who averaged 31 points a game. No team better scoring not only on their opening drive, which they missed on, but still in the opening quarter, explosive. But worth pointing out that, Rodney, they averaged 41 points a game at home, but on the road just 21 a game. Unfortunately for Green Bay in, in this entire season, the one place they've struggled has been on the road scoring points. We saw it last week when they were up in Buffalo. And it's of note because Tampa Bay, is, as of late, since the bye week, they've played some pretty good defense. The, 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 the one Achilles heel, obviously, has been the play of the quarterback. Haven't been able to score a lot of points, but their defense has been pretty formidable the last se seven weeks of the season. And to get a sense of these two teams, Tampa Bay, in games decided by seven points or less, their record is 1-7 and seven this year. But the Packers, in games decided by seven points or less, 5-0. and oh. That's, a, that's a great stat. It's so telling. Most games in the NFL come down to three, seven games, a play at the end of the game, and the Bucs haven't got it done, whereas Green Bay has been doing it all season long. Rodgers for his first pass. He goes short, and it's incomplete to James Starks. And Rodgers, slow getting up. He took quite a shot here at the end of this play from Michael Johnson. You see Michael Johnson at the top of your screen up here. Just Aaron, as Aaron holds on to this thing. And he got, you know he's not feeling well already. This won't make him feel any better. On second and ten. From the pocket, low, and caught by Richard Rodgers. He stays in bounds up the sideline. It'll bring up a third down. Rodgers said they had the cold he had, more of a head cold, uh, speaking softly, drinking hot tea and, and honey when he chatted with us. He's had it for about three or four days. And look how good he's been in the first half. He's made defenses sick. I tell you what, no interceptions. It's almost a shock when he throws a bad pass. You ask him about it, he's like, oh, it just happens. Like, not, not very often does it happen. Starks in the backfield on third and two. Plenty of time for Aaron Rodgers. And open. That's Jordy Nelson. How did the number one receiver get so open? Well, Rodgers had a lot of time. They, they talk about his second and third reaction plays all the time. Now, Brandon, when you get this much time in the pocket, it turns into playground football. But watch Jordy Nelson here work on Alteron Werner. See the route there, but watch him turn up field. And he's coming right back because he knows that ball is coming to him. It's a base scramble operation that they use all the time and Jordy Nelson and Aaron Rodgers are always on the same page. Starks remains the back after a gain of 28 to the 36 of the Bucks. Starts the carry. And nowhere to go. Hit hard. Excellent defense. Bradley McDougal. Let's get a game break with Joel Klatt. All right, Chris, to New Orleans. Of course, the Saints can win the NFC South if they win today against Atlanta, and Carolina loses at home against the Browns. Opening kickoff, Jalen Saunders. First kickoff return of his career. Takes it all the way inside the five. Mark Ingram will score in the next play at 7-3 Saints. Chris. Thanks, Joel. Rodgers is going to go down. 
At the 45, the ball came out at the end, but they're saying he's down, and Michael Johnson with the sack, and again, Rodgers, second time already, slow to get up. Well, Bucks fans haven't seen much of Michael Johnson all year. The big free agent acquisition he's right over here at, at right defensive end and they run a stunt he gets passed off and then nobody there to pick him up i tell you chris this play the last play the running play you see the bucks defense trying to establish what they've always been known for and that's hustle that ball almost looked like it was out they might want to challenge that chris. and there is a challenge flag coming out here it comes lovey smith is three out of six when it's come Tampa, to challenges Tampa Bay is challenged but the runner fumbled prior to being down by contact. The ruling on the field is sack, no fumble. Bucks challenging the loose ball. This game is sponsored by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Rodgers was sacked, ruled no fumble. Bucks challenged. Terry McCauley's had a closer look. The Bucks clearly recover the loose football. After a year, the quarterback fumbled prior to being down by contact, and it was recovered by the defense. It will be first down Tampa Bay at the 45-yard line. Please set the game clock to 9 minutes, 37 seconds. Tampa Bay is not charged with a timeout. Clinton McDonald came up with a loose football. Aaron Rodgers' sixth fumble in the last six games. They don't give it away much. That's only the 11th giveaway this season by the Packers. You've got to give credit to the Bucs here for a fast start on the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, the three and out to start the game. The fumble here. I, I, Chris, you talked about Aaron Rodgers being under the weather. To me, he doesn't look right. And maybe the Bucks defense has something to do with it, but he does seem just a little bit off. He did not seem that sick, and he said, I'll, I'll see how well I feel when I wake up in the morning. His voice sounded better. But the takeaway for Tampa Bay, Lovey Smith has lived on those for years. Four, four. Four, that. See if the Bucks can do anything with it. McCown is going to throw it low and incomplete. He was under a heavy rush by Sam Barrington, star from South Florida. In his second year, and the pass was low, it'll be second and ten. Saw Matt Flynn warming up moments ago over on the Packers sideline. Rodgers also has been hit hard in this opening quarter. I find it hard to believe if knowing the competitor that Aaron Rodgers is and how important this game is for the playoffs. You mentioned that they win, they're in, that he won't come back out and try to at least play this football game. Plenty of time, and McCown goes down. The Packer defense. There was nowhere to go, and Mike Daniels with his fifth sack of the season. Well, you get this much time to rush the quarterback. No place to deliver it. And guys talented as Mike Daniels. See Burnett in there. They had a five-man pressure coming at the quarterback. They're going to get home. All the way back to the 35. Six defensive backs on third down. Josh McCown actually wearing a glove on his non-throwing hand to protect the football for the first time in his career. But it's batted and incomplete. Clay Matthews. He's been battling a biceps injury, but he's been a different player. It's been a different defense when they've moved him inside. I know this play is tipped, but this is a simple screen play. The operation should be nice and easy for the Bucks to execute, and they haven't been able to get it done. It's indicative, though, Chris, of how they've struggled all year long. Micah Hyde now back to return the punt from Canaan, and a big stop from the Packer defense, shoving Tampa Bay backwards. Kick, fair catch, waves four, sliding at the 25. Here comes Aaron Rodgers. He's already been hit a couple of times and lost the football. But the Packers had the football in a scoreless game. This game on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Beautiful things happen when you go further. By Bank of America. And by Target. Expect more, pay less. Doesn't feel much like Christmas here with temperature in the mid-70s. In fact, a 40-degree difference from where Green Bay is and where we are here. And they're working on the padding in the left shoe for Aaron Rodgers. That was moments ago. 
On first down, Lacey the carry, spins and knocked down across the 25 by Bradley McDougal. Bradley McDougal, who stepped into the starting lineup after Mark Barron left for St. Louis, after Major Wright went hurt. This kid right here, Chris, is the future safety here in Tampa. They talk about him all the time. He had a great preseason. He's worked his way onto the playing field. After a yard pickup, Second and nine. Lacey again. Big pull for Lacey. First down all the way up to the 45 of Green Bay. Well, I know they want to establish the running game, and this is the guy to do it, but watch your fullback right here. Khan, as he comes to this. That's Coon. Coon, sorry. As, as he comes to the hole here and just knocks down Levante David, opens up that huge game for Eddie Lacey. And we have an injured Buccaneer, Mason Foster is slow to get up he's still down on the field linebacker for tampa bay checking the left foot ankle area of mason foster who has been injured much of the season no additional linebacker needed here as the bucks go with five defensive backs but lansana will slide into the middle when they go with three linebackers on first and ten from just beyond the 45 lacy with already 30 yards on five carries in 18. In 18. And he gets it out of the way. Here comes a flag in the backfield as he pounds his way down inside the 40 of Tampa Bay. You're going to get a hold here on Green Bay. Holding offense number 63. 10 yard penalty. First down. But you just see how powerful a runner Eddie Lacy can be at the second level of this run. Center is number 63 right here. He's going to hold. He just throws. 91 to the ground, but just Lacey, when he impacts guys in the secondary, it just that takes a toll on your defense. And he's, he's been doing it all year, and I guarantee you they continue to hand the ball off to him here today. So it negates a 15-yard gain. The rookie center, Corey Lindsley, who has been playing uh, well, getting better with each game, called for the infraction. But we got to watch Aaron Rodgers here between the early hits, the padding in the shoe, the head cold. On first and 20. He completes that pass to Starks, who puts a move on. Stop short of the 44. Let's get another game break. Check on the Lions of the NFC North playing in Chicago with Joel Black. Let's head up there, Chris. Reggie Bush, a play after converting on fourth down on the screen pass. He gets the call again. 13-yard TD run. Of course, Detroit with a win, coupled with a Packers loss, and the Lions would be NFC North champs. Chris and Ronde. Five one. Thank you, Joe, and a win today by the Packers, and they're secured of it, the very least, a wild card spot. Pass complete, and we pour us to tight end. It'll be third down. I know he's not feeling well and beat up, but I'm going to tell you what, I, it's hard for, for me to doubt Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> well, and his history here, you mentioned his only two trips to Tampa Bay. You know, Ronda, he's only had three three interception games in his career, and two of them have come in the two trips to Tampa Bay. And I played in both of those football games, and the defense then was a lot better than it is now, so that may have been an anomaly that will be corrected now. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty and candor. On third and 11. Time for Rodgers. And open off his hands. Devontae Adams, the rookie from Fresno State, couldn't hold a bullet. And Aaron Rodgers ducked his head and said, look here, rookie, I give you opportunities. You better catch this. But this is Aaron Rodgers at his best. Find time in the pocket. Nobody does it better. This second and third level, I'm telling you, receivers finding time after the play is broken down. Aaron Rodgers delivers great the balls all the time. He just got to come up with that reception. And the Packers counted nine drops last week. The big one by Jordy Nelson. That contributed to that loss in Buffalo. Masta gets it away. Short kick. Rainey waving everybody away. It takes a Buccaneer bounce up to the 30 before the Packers down it. A defensive struggle so far. A lot on the line for Green Bay. Bring in the new year at Fox Sports 1. We'll bring you a marathon of Big East basketball. All 10 teams, including a showdown between Butler and Villanova, ranked nationally. Our Big East New Year's Eve marathon, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, goes all the way to midnight on Fox Sports 1 and always streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Bucks bring in an extra lineman. 
And Rogers being checked in. Cut. Charles Sims checks in. The rookie yeah, from West Virginia, an excellent receiver. He gets the football and gets knocked down right at the 30. Let's check in down on the field, Jennifer Hale. Well, Chris, an old ghost is haunting linebacker Mason Foster once again for the Bucks. It is his Achilles rearing its head once again, something he's battled all season along with an ankle. He's now questionable. Trainers have taped him from midfoot all the way up to the knee, and right now he's on the exercise bike, Chris, trying to come back into this game. Thank you, Jen. And for Charles Sims, Rhonda, you know he started the year on injured reserve, made his debut in November against Atlanta, somebody that Bucks had hoped to have from the beginning. He's getting better with each game. And in there on second and nine. As a receiver goes to the bottom of the screen. McCown to the middle of the field short right at the 35 as Vincent Jackson and knocked backward. You know, Charles Sims was a guy that they drafted and really liked his ability to catch the ball out of the, the backfield. West Virginia, he was, you know, a special type player. He's got a bunch of different running styles, if you ask him, and he can make people miss. You saw Bucks fans that watched the game last week saw some great open field runs by him. Let's try to get him involved early in this game today. On third and four, extra defensive back in. McCown just completed his first pass of this game. From the pocket, incomplete in the area of Vincent Jackson, but a poorly thrown football. Yeah, another bad throw by, by Josh McCown, and good, good coverage. But one thing that the Bucks are going to try to get done is watch DeMar Dotson at left tackle here, his new role, working against a guy like Clay Matthews, who's one of the best in football, and does a pretty good job there. they got to make some decisions on personnel here in Tampa. You play against guys like this, you get to evaluate them, and it was a good job by DeMar right there. So back to Kanan. So punt, Randall Cobb returns, standing at his own 23-yard line for the Packers to return the kick on fourth and four. That last punt by Green Bay by Mastin was only 26 yards. Cobb is going to go down. A lot of running to get back to about the 18-yard line. Russell Shepard, who's the third receiver today for Tampa Bay, making this special teams play. Six runs, seven passes. That's the way the plays have been called so far for the limping Aaron Rodgers. After the beating in Buffalo, Rondé Barber, Rodgers getting hit early here in Tampa Bay. Michael Johnson has been very active early in this football game. Never know what this could be. You see them working on his calf. It could be a bruise, could be a strain. Moments ago, you see him stretching out that left ankle and his right ankle there too. But something is going on in that left foot left ankle area for Aaron Rodgers today. We'll keep an eye on it and see if it affects the way he moves around in the pocket. The lower part of his body, and he uses his feet very well. Remember last year, missed seven starts with the collarbone injury, but came back to lead the Packers to the playoffs in Week 17. Lacey the carry, and the Bucks with five defensive backs shove him backward. You know, the Bucks, they told us that they're going to have to do a lot of different things. This is a base cover two team in Tampa Bay. But if you sit back in zones too high and let Aaron Rodgers vet it out, he's going to tear you apart. So you'll see a lot of safety. McDougal or Golson walking into the box to create that eighth man. Second and eight from the 20. There's a flag down. Rodgers goes underneath and completes to Lacey, who's knocked down short of the 25-yard line. Looks like it's against Green Bay, according to Terry McCauley, who... Illegal formation. Offense, number 73 did not report as an eligible receiver, and he was on the end of the line. Five-yard penalty, second down. Mike McCarthy saying J.C. Treader did report, but that's the penalty. I was saying McCauley is a retired computer programmer at the NSA, so he's not going to miss much. On second and 13. Now, in fairness to Rodgers, he did have to drop on the pass to the rookie Devontae Adams so far on a well-delivered ball. And he floats this one down the sideline. There was a gap there, but incomplete. Intended for Adams once again, who he said if... 
he has a good week of practice unless it's a guy I've worked with like Jordy Nelson or Jared Boykin then I will throw to the guy and Boykin's a guy who they haven't used much this year he only has three catches they haven't used him at all they expected big sting at the line of scrimmage quick here Chris there's a flag down middle of the field for Nelson with a big catch And a first down, Packers pending the flag. Defense, 12 men on the field with the snap. The penalties decline, first down. And that hurry up move. The Bucks got caught trying to sub package and that's why they went quick count here. But see Jordy Nelson, this is cover two. There's an area right past the middle linebacker. It's Danny Lansana there. If you can get a ball in over him, there's some room between him and the safety, and Aaron Rodgers is as equipped as any quarterback in the league to deliver that ball. Gain of 24. This is Randall Cobb. He dances up near another first down. Great block there by Jordy Nelson on Altamont Ferner. His defense is predicated on keeping leverage on formations, and watch Alteron Werner right here get pinned in by Jordy Nelson and get Randall Cobb out to the corner. It's a flaw. The defense has been exposed over, over, over and over for this over, Tampa Bay over, team. They're going to have to shore that up as this game goes on. We need Gene! We need Gene! Nelson falls forward. Alteron Werner right there with him and a first down. Looks like Rodgers is getting into a bit of a groove now. Well, he is. You know, you know they wanted to come out and establish the run they did that but this team goes on the arm of Aaron Rodgers it is it's a special arm talent so whenever they need to move the ball expect 12 to be throwing it ready ready cut he's throwing again completes again to Cobb tackled at the 44 Tampa Bay and Tampa Bay plays so much zone not very much man-to-man -man in the arsenal for Lovey Smith and Leslie Frazier defense coordinator Leslie Frazier so he knows he has those areas, and the ball comes out of his hand so quick, Tampa, all they can do is come up and react and make tackles. I, I think the Bucs are going to have to start playing some man-to-man -man coverage, or he's going to do this all day long. And Rodgers, 8-2 and two in his career against Lovey Smith defenses. Those in Chicago. Sled, 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 Manny Lacy on his way. Touchdown Packers. The Bucks had this play sniffed out at the beginning. But Eddie Lacy is so powerful. And he just runs through the tackle here. And you'll see it. Aaron Rodgers checks the play. Danny Lansana, clear shot to make that tackle for a two-yard game. He just shugs him off like he's an annoying little fly and goes in for the big <laughs> touchdown for Green Bay. And that puts him over 1,000 yards for this season. That's his longest run of the year, 44 yards. And on for the extra point. And the Packers lead 7 to nothing. This is the 11th straight game in which the Packers have scored first. Longest active streak in the NFL. And the Packers, if they win, they're in the playoffs. And then, of course, next week at Lambeau hosting Detroit when they can decide the division winner of the NFC North. And right now the Lions are leading Chicago 7 to nothing. You see the Saints battling Atlanta and New Orleans with a 7-3 lead in that game. Carolina is still alive. The Panthers with a 3-0 lead at home against the Browns. I think it's setting up for a great Week 17, especially up there in the North, Chris. This Green Bay, or that Detroit game at Green Bay, I think is one that everybody will want to watch. See who's going to win that division and get the top of the upper seed in, in this playoff race. You heard a lot of cheering when Lacey scored here in Tampa, and that's because uh, a number of Packer fans are here. This game sold out in a heartbeat, fastest on the schedule, and the Outback Bowl, Wisconsin playing here on New Year's Day against Auburn in this stadium, but cheese heads everywhere. I can't help but notice, too, all the red and green mixing. It's a holiday. It's a, yes. it's a festive environment and, here and you, and you and I are dressed in blue. That's because <laughs> we have to be impartial as the Packers score first and continue to get an early jump on teams in the opening quarter. 
Out to the 20-yard line, Tampa Bay will try again on offense. Let's head back to the field and Jennifer Hale. Well, Chris, you mentioned that glove Josh McCown was wearing for ball security. Here's the other one in that pair. He's hoping the palm will help him grip the ball better today, but he told me it's also a mental game. He asked his coaches for some drills to help him be more secure with the ball. So all week long, they've had him hold the ball up at his chest all during practice whenever he wasn't throwing. And Josh tells me he's really hoping that helps his mindset and translates to the field today, Chris. Yeah, he had nine fumbles this year. He said there's a lot of traffic back there. It's like traffic on the I-275 downtown. And that's not an excuse for him not securing the ball, but the offensive line has been in shambles much of the year. Doug Martin carries. Especially the right side of that offensive line, Chris. DeMar Dotson was over there at right tackle. We've mentioned they since moved him to left tackle, but Patrick Omame, who's playing guard today, O'Neal Cousins, who was a free agent acquisition. It's It's been, you watch him on film, and, and Traffic is a nice way of, of saying. You know, <laughs> I'm saying I don't have time. But yeah. you got to. That's you know. Lovey Smith says take away the ball, protect the football. Absolutely. And Josh McCown has had trouble protecting the ball. Yeah, three. On second and six. The pitch to Charles Sims, and the Packers are ready for it. It'll be third down. Ha ha! Clinton Dix, the number one pick from Alabama, coming up to make the stop. Neither defense ranked in the top 20, but a defensive struggle in the opening quarter, and the Packers lead a win, and they're in. With Rodney Barber, Chris Myers, our entire crew, an early Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to you. Coming up on Thursday, hope you're enjoying the NFL on Fox. Bucks trying to hang with the Packers as we start the second quarter. Josh McCown floats one to nowhere. That's in the area of Mike Evans. But this offense, like it has been much of the year, not clicking. Not clicking at all. And it's the first opportunity ball towards Mike Evans. And, man, Josh threw that three yards out of bounds. The you know, rookie who played with Johnny Manziel, you asked him back in the preseason, who's going to have a bigger year? You were Johnny Manziel without hesitation. He said, I will. Well, he's a confident and, kid. And he's right. And he's, and he's, and he's right. And he's something very special to build on. If you're, if you're down here in Tampa Bay, he's got all the skill sets that you need, but they got to find ways to get him in, in, involved in this football game where this offense has no chance. Micah Hyde on the run takes that punt and is knocked down at the 38-yard line by Russell Shepard. The duo of Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb have caught a combined 22 touchdowns of Aaron Rodgers' 35. The first duo in Packers history to catch 10-plus touchdowns in the same season and the first to have over 1,000 receiving yards since Donald Driver and Brett Jennings in 2009. These, these two guys are just amazing. Chris, you watch them on the film, the act, how active they are, how good they are at route running. And then, like I keep mentioning, the second and third reaction level plays, they're on such a cue with their quarterback. It's no wonder they have the numbers that they have. But the running game with Eddie Lacy has been the story today. Starks is in the backfield. Rodgers looks to throw and goes underneath. Starks, who, as Mike McCarthy told us, I see him as 1-1A. One and one I mean, he doesn't see much of a drop-off from Lacy, who's been outstanding, to James Starks, who helped him to that Super Bowl win early in his career. He's been in the league for five years, and I'm, I'm telling you, he has different body type, but the same type of running style. He's linear, he gets downhill, breaks tackles. Asset to have two guys who you can count on in the backfield like they have here in Green Bay. Ready to find those Mike. Ready, ready, Stop. Rodgers' quick throw, that's the rookie Adams, and he's got a first down up near midfield. What I was saying before, as the helmet is knocked off. Well, he's identifying who the Mike linebacker is. It's, it's Dane Fletcher, who's in the game now for Mason Foster. He had the look, yeah, he had the look that he wanted. He didn't have the look that he wanted, so he checked out of it through that little smoke, that quick pass. Instead of running the ball into a defense that can stop it, it's 10 yards in first down. 19! Starks on a delay handoff, and he's going to lose yardage. Daquan Bowers, we talked about McCoy being out of the game and Bowers being more effective for the Buccaneers inside than outside. Nice play there by, by Daquan Bowers. And yes, he started out as a defensive end here in Tampa. 
This, this preseason, Coach Lovey Smith decided he'd be better fit as a backup three technique to Gerald McCoy. With Gerald on the sideline, you see him there. They've needed somebody to come in and step in, and he's had to do it. Clint McDonald will play that role a little bit, too. Starts as a receiver, top of your screen. John Coon in the backfield. down right away. You know, McCoy was really upset. Number one, he didn't want to leave the field, but injured because he wanted to play against Aaron Rodgers, very much aware of the great history of the Buccaneers and Packers. Absolutely. And he told me before the game, talk to Warren Sapp, who had all those great battles against Brett Favre. Well, this is Brett Favre 2.0 and Warren Sapp 2.0. You've seen it on the field. The fact that he couldn't play, he was beside himself. You're saying no, but it's ruled a catch. Jordy Nelson went down to get it. And to be fair, Aaron Rodgers is 1.0, and so is Gerald McCoy at 1.0. But for comparison's sake, oh, okay. <laughs> they hurry to the line. We got you. Gain of 12. Red Ryan. Red Ryan. Red Ryan. Red Ryan. Red Ryan. But you saw Levante David on defense pushing his arms up. Obviously, the Bucks not being able to huddle because Green Bay's not being able to huddle. Getting the calls from the sideline and just it's all communication. And Aaron is calling these last five or six plays at the line of scrimmage. You hear the audio. Our audio is so good. You hear him making all the checks at the line of scrimmage. The Bucks are just trying to react. Not doing so well at it right now. He'll lose yardage back to the 30. Farther up from his corner spot. And Mike McCarthy told us that you put this back in even before training camp, that when you have a guy like Rodgers, there's five different concepts on every play. It's become easier to call the plays into his quarterback because of how they understand each other over the years. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a benefit of having a guy, first of all, that's as heady as Aaron Rodgers is, and a guy that has the same type of communication level as his head coach. And, when you're able to do that, you can be this type, you can have this type of offense. But an important down for the Bucks defense to keep themselves from falling further behind on third and four. Watch this matchup up here. And we're going to have a timeout. Green Bay wanting it. Their first timeout of this half. Today's game is sponsored by Pepsi. Pepsi Hyped for Halftime, the official sponsor of the Pepsi Super Bowl 49 Halftime Show. By Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. And by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. Rondé Barber mentioned our terrific audio. That's Chip Weaver, who works up in the booth with us. That's uh, Tom and Betsy behind him, Tampa residents who are helping us here. But Kevin McCloskey down in the truck. We also have James Petralka and Rick Odioso working with us upstairs, upstairs here as well. On third down and four. Starts the back. Rodgers rolling to his right. And on the run throws it. Bounces incomplete toward Randall Cobb and usually Aaron makes that kind of a throw yeah he really does usually connect on these deals but Tampa mentioned earlier there's such a zone team getting those third and short situations you have to play man-to-man -man. did a good job there coming up Randall Cobb to allow this field goal opportunity here for Mason Crosby it'll be a try of 48 now he's had four blocks this year Crosby is now 25 out of 30. And Mike McCarthy frustrated. The Packers come away with no points, but still lead here 7 to nothing in Tampa Bay.
Boston team not getting it done here. You saw the head shake from Crosby missing from 48. And that's been a problem all season long for the pack. But from the 38, great field position. Charles Sims in the backfield for the Bucks. McCown is going to go down. That's a sack for Clay Matthews. Eight and a half now this year. The Bucks with six total yards on offense. You'll see Gilkey right here. He's in as a third, second tight end. And this is just stealing. We know how good Clay Matthews is. There is no way that Garrett Gilkey is going to win that matchup there. And that's not the play that you want on first down in this Bucks offense. Because they just find ways, continue to find ways to be unproductive. Josh McCown couldn't take advantage when the defense had a takeaway of a Rodgers fumble. They went backward then. It's a throw. And that's incomplete. Luke Stocker, the target. Only once has he gone in, the, in these fans here. The Buck fans are giving it to Josh McCown. Well, he started one for seven today. There's just no sense that the running game's going to get going. Every time he drops back, there's pressure in him or he's made it, making a bad delivery. They've got to do something. I, I mean, for me, just throw it up to Mike Evans. Saw anything will, will work better than what's going on right now for us. He has missed in Chicago. On third and 16, the count has time, signaling, sideline, he's got a man with a step, but it hangs in the air, and it's incomplete. It was Mike Evans. The ball just floated, and Dix, Clinton Dix and Shields were back there. Well, he was running through this secondary and had a step on him. The ball comes late, and ha ha Clinton Dix and Sam Shields, perfect position, knock that or defend that pass this offense Chris this is it's hard to watch this week in and week out I wonder how they're going to get better and win football games well the quarterback position they will address we'll talk more about that in the second half no matter where the Bucks draft whether it's first overall or not the quarterback for next year is is not here now for Tampa Bay they got to get the ball to that guy somehow some way you're watching the NFL on Fox this game is sponsored by Beats by Dre Solo 2. Show us your solo selfie. Buccaneers trailing here, 7 to nothing. The defense has dug in, but the offense, look at that. The yards per play so far, nothing. Zip, zero, not. You see that commercial, the phone or internet commercial? Zilch for the Bucks. Green Bay defense doing an excellent job against Josh McCown this afternoon. Eddie Lacy has the only touchdown of the game. He's in the backfield. On first down, Rodgers is hit as he throws, but right on target up across the 45 is Randall Cobb. All the way up near the 50. Aaron Rodgers took another hit, but this, his ability to sit here and step up in the pocket, Tampa's playing zone coverage. You see the overreaction there. There's nobody on that side of the defense to to make a play on Randall Cobb and Keem Spence here just drags him to the ground and another hit on Aaron Rodgers. He is playing hurt today. 145 yards passing though. 14 out of 18. Are you ready? And off Lacey who gets into Buccaneer territory. Got a lot out of that to the 46 yard line. Lacey came in averaging over Four and a half yards of carry. Also had 38 catches during the season. He's carried eight times for 80 yards today. Ready, ready. Make it nine. And near another first down. Well, with Eddie Lacy, Chris, it's not only getting the ball to him run, running. He's such a good check down option in the pass for Aaron Rodgers. And he did get the first down. Excuse me, Rondo. And this is the kind of guy when you get outdoors, playoff weather, December football. Yeah. You can pound away with Lacey or have Rodgers take over. Oh, hey, hey, this side. Quit up right. This side, you're Fascinating. One quarterback directing traffic, the other is in it. Pass complete. Richard Rodgers. Well, the, the, the fascinating thing to me, Chris, is as he sits there at the line of scrimmage, there's obviously some structure to the formation. They're lined up. 
But Aaron Rodgers is so on top of the game. He studies his opponents. So whatever look that they're given, you'll see him. A look across. They'll eye the defense, make a decision, call a play. And the fact that they're all on the same page is just it's amazing. He's on target for a first down to Cobb. In fact, Lovey Smith called. He, you know, sometimes coaches hesitate. He called Aaron Rodgers the best quarterback in the game today. He said, no, no, no disrespect to Manning or Brady, but I've seen enough of Aaron Rodgers. He runs, he throws, and we're seeing some toughness again from Rodgers. A heck of a compliment from Lovey Smith. And, of course, the fan vote for the Pro Bowl. Number one, he got the most, Aaron Rodgers. Now, there's no question. He's if not the best, second best player in the NFL. You could throw J.J. Watt out there, some other guys that are as impactful, but you talk about MVP, this, if Matt Flint's playing quarterback here, this offense is not the same. We know what Aaron Rodgers is, he's the most valuable person in the league for me. See, there's a shot down you're talking about. Knocked down, pushed backwards at the 26. You got to give some credit here to Tampa's defense. You know, you, you see them subbing in players and players, and that's why Aaron Rodgers is going to the line fast right now. And eight at the 25. Now he hesitates on third and seven. Looks toward Nelson's coming the other way. Fires and knocked away from the rookie Adams. And that's incomplete. What a hit. Again, I was going to say, you got to give credit here to the Bucks defense flying around and impacting plays. You watch Aaron Rodgers here. Fake, he has Randall Cobb running through the middle, but you can't see it. And, but this Bucks defense. They can get this uh, this type of identity. Team that runs around, flies around, even if they give up yards, don't break, then don't break, then they can have they can establish something good here. Deshaun Goltz have delivered the hit. Crosby from 42, and this time it's good. Rodgers gets them back into field goal range. And the Packers add to their lead. 10-0. New show, Empire, coming in January, starring Terrence Howard as a hip-hop mogul. And if you like high drama and amazing music, this is the show for you. Empire premieres Wednesday, January 7th on Fox. Yeah, there you go. Wow, she's dancing better than I can, buddy. Every like time it. I read this promo, you you did there. <laughs> uh, that's fine. You, you, you could have a cameo on the show. There you go. Sell me. Bobby Rainey will let it go. So to the 20-yard line, you saw the dancing Rondé Barber moments ago. Well, Mike McCarthy said this week when he asked his players to elect their playoff captains, not in yet, if they win, they're in. But he, he basically said our playoffs start now. They absolutely do, Chris. This is not a must-win game for, for Green Bay, but it's a game, another game on the road that they need to establish themselves. Don't know if they're going to get the home field throughout the course of the playoffs and they haven't been great on the road this year they're three and four so far with that tough loss last week to buffalo they need a good performance today here in tampa bay and those defenses on the road aside from buffalo that they lost you think about it seattle detroit very good defenses playoff teams and off here is sims and there's a flag on the play as he gets up to the 25 yard line i'll tell you this green bay defense holding offense number 75 10 yard penalty first down call on O'Neal Cousins this Packer defense is in playoff form they absolutely are and they have so many guys that they use the linebackers there's Dom this, Capers yeah the Dom Capers the coordinator defensive coordinator of the Packers they use so many linebackers on this defense that it's hard to get a, a, a feel for what they are and, and it's good because they can do just about anything they have A.J. Hawk who starts Sam Barrington we know Clay Matthews has been talked about ad nauseum and how he's moved around but it's really helped this defense, the structure of this defense, and they've been playing much better in the second half of the season. First and 20. Morgan Burnett already credit for half a sack, was up from his safety spot on that play. When they talk about this kid as the heartbeat of the defense, you'll see him in this great low angle, splitting through that gap, untouched, and making an 
awesome tackle on Charles Sim. That is a great pitch. Ground level <laughs> view, our director Michael Frank, producer Mike Burks, and Burnett voted one of those playoff captains along with Julius Peppers and of course on offense Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb on the special teams. Bucks going backwards on offense. Pass is caught. That's Mike Evans' first catch of the game, and you get a good look at the seventh overall pick. And that's a first down, and the Bucks first. First down of this game. Find ways to get Mike Evans the football. I don't care what it takes. He's the only person, Vincent Jackson, you can give some credit to, but he's the only person that can be this dynamic. And you, this is a great catch, really, avoiding Sam Shields there. And then the effort afterwards, it's, it's exciting if you're a Bucks fan. you got this guy to look forward to. He only has four drops yeah, and 110 targets. A gain of 22 on that play, and this play goes nowhere. Sims had nowhere to run except into the arms of Clay Matthews. Tell me more about that move inside for him. Well, he still lines up outside, and that's where he was on this play. When they're in their base defense, they're a 3-4 defense. So there's three down linemen, two outside linebackers. He's that one guy outside. But when they get in their sub package, he goes to that stack position. He's behind the line of scrimmage. It is three minutes, five seconds. And I think it's a good move for Green Bay to move him off the ball. He's been hurt his entire career. He hasn't played it a full season the entire year uh, or his entire career. But being off the ball takes some of that pounding off of Clay Matthews, and I think it's a good move for him to play the multiple positions on this defense first. And be ready for the postseason. Packers win, and they're in. You saw Mike Evans. They were checking his eye uh, moments ago. He he told us he plays on the Madden video game. He plays Tremon Williams all the time. This is the first time he's playing him for real life. Hurry, hurry, touch. After the timeout, a miscommunication. Receiver stopped Vincent Jackson at the 45, and the ball went downfield. It'll be third and 11. There you go. That's what he's wondering. What's that route? Where's the communication? I'm interpreting here. Oh, there's, you know, there's a, a slight miscommunication here. And I say slight as in very facetiously. Well, and the ball goes 30 yards down the field, and Vincent Jackson's stopping on a back shoulder throw. Let's be fair to Lovey Smith. Jed Tedford, his offensive coordinator at the start of the year, had health issues, has moved on to Canada, not involved with the team. 34-year-old Marcus Arroyo had to take over in that position. It's been a, an issue all year. It'll be a priority in the offseason. On third down, it's the same kind of play, but the coverage is good, and what a grab by Vincent Jackson. You know what, Chris, when all else fails, take one of these 6'4", 6'5", wide receivers and throw them a 50-50 ball and let them go make plays. Vincent Jackson's been doing this his entire career. You know, he's not the fastest guy, but if you look at his career statistics, and he has, I think, the third most yards per catch active in the NFL right now, and it's because he has the ability to make plays like that on balls down the field. A 40-yard gain. He went up to get it, that 6-5 frame, nearing 1,000 yards receiving, Let's go. and voted the Bucks man of the year, so up for the annual Walter Payton Award. Extra lineman in. McCown from behind pressure for the end zone, and incomplete as a flag down. Mike Evans was the target. And Ramon Williams was back there. Pass interference. Offense number 13. Two-yard penalty. First down. Well, he's arguing his case that he's trying to get to the ball, but video game or not, Chris, this is offensive <laughs> pass interference. You see him put his hands on his back oh, yeah. and trying to affect him to get through the ball. It's a good call by the by the officials well, there. Mike Evans told us in the video game you can't go over the top on <laughs> Tremont Williams. He, I guess he meant passing the ball, not physically. But a tough break for the outstanding rookie who got engaged this weekend. So congratulations to Mike Evans. But the penalty pushes the Bucks back to the 40, nearing the two-minute warning. Tampa Bay, all three of their timeouts. Hut, hut. 58, 58. Able, able, hut. McCown. 
Sims. It completes to Charles Sims, and this is what they like about the rookie. Down at field goal range, just short of a first down. We've hit the two-minute warning at Tampa Bay. The Packers lead seven to nothing. It's been tough, but the Bucks are on the move. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to itunes.com slash NFL. Fans having a good time no matter which side of the field you're on here. And now the, for the Bucks, first time their offense has moved into Packer territory. 52. Need a couple of yards to get into the red zone. And roll, second yeah. and two. Smart four. Four, four. And that's straight ahead. It will be third. That's Doug Martin shoved back by Morgan Burnett. Be third down. Have not heard the cannons so far today. That's Chris. the old uh, everybody ducks when you get inside the 20. When the Bucks home team, those cannons are fired. Part of the fun atmosphere here in Tampa Bay. Our legendary broadcaster Gene Deckerhoff always says, oh, the "Cannons." That was not a great representation of it either. And fighting hard, but. Short is Doug Martin, and again it's Morgan Burnett. That yellow line used as a gauge, fourth and short. Let's see if Lovey Smith goes for it. I asked him on Friday at practice, Ronde, in these situations, the Bucks are going to use a timeout here. If you're going to gamble a little bit more, given the circumstances. Not that they don't have anything to play for, because we mentioned that earlier, that they want to win this football game. You want to have, a, you want to be able to play a good game. See your progress in your team against a great football team, and they have that. So, to be honest with you, Chris, I would not be surprised to see them go for this on fourth down. It would be a 39-yard field goal, but they're going to pass up the option. Their rookie kicker, Patrick Murray, has done well this year, and Lovey going to go for it you're from the 21. You're playing the pack. You know what they can do on offense. You have to match points. So, yeah, go for this. Get the first down. Show your team that you're willing to risk it to beat a good football team. And there's Marcus Arroyo, the young offensive coordinator who had never done that before at the NFL level, thrown in to that position. On third and one, the Bucks go for it on fourth, excuse me, on fourth and one, and get the necessary yardage to get the first down. And it was Doug Martin at 5'9 who carried. Shouldn't they cue the cannons? They're in the red zone. We're waiting for it. Maybe they're not used to it. Well, they're just outside, ah. right at the 20, so they're on top of things. The nose of the football. Meanwhile, the clock's running here, and Tampa Bay has two timeouts. Hurry, hurry. The count on the move. Throwing out of bounds. 24 seconds remaining. Pressure was put on by Julius Peppers. We haven't called his name today. In his first year as a Packer. And a low-scoring weekend around the NFL, at least on Sunday here. Last night they had some wild games. Piece of halftime report. Saints are leading by one over Atlanta in the second quarter. Detroit and the Bears are tied at seven. Doug Martin in on second and ten. Three receivers to the left. Mike Evans on the right. McCown on the move. High and incomplete. Evans was in the area. Well, Evans ran a long way trying to get that completion. And the people might clamor for Mike Glennon to get an opportunity late in this season, but this is the reason why Josh McCown is the quarterback here. And Lovey says it's because he gives him the best chance to win. And quite honestly, it's because he can do that. He can get out of the pocket, try to create some room with his feet. Glennon started five games. He led them to the victory against the Steelers. A third down and ten. McCown is going to go down. The Packer defense and Julius Peppers with his sixth sack of the season. Julius Peppers just overpowered O'Neal Cousins. You see it right here. Just run right through him. Julius Peppers has been doing that his entire career. He's still got 
power and strength, speed that he can create to power. And he's 34 years old, but nothing the Bucks could do there could stop charging Julius Peppers. And wearing that 56 of Patrick Murray, after the Bucks timeout, will line up for a 42-yard field goal. Let's check in, see what's coming up at the half. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll check in on all the teams fighting for a playoff spot. The Panthers want to keep their division hopes alive against the Browns. The Texans are still fighting for a wild card spot against the Ravens. The Steelers and Chiefs lock up in a wild card battle as well. We'll see you at the half. The Packers just used a timeout, officially spotted as a 43-yard kick for the rookie Patrick Murray, who is 17 of 21 this year. He's made from 55. He's also had one block. And the Bucs will get the football to start the second half. I did want to mention that number of Julius Peppers because his first year in Green Bay wearing 56, it was an interesting concept of why he picked that number. Of course, he's from he went to college at North Carolina and to honor the great Lawrence Taylor, the linebacker, Hall of Famer, who wore that number. He decided also played at North Carolina, he'd wear it. Well, he came in here and B.J. Roddy, Roddy had 90 already, so. Yeah. Who he got hurt in the uh, hurt preseason. In preseason. To get the Bucks on the board from 43. Murray nailed it. There go the cannons. The Packers with a 10 to 3 lead. Eddie Lacy's touchdown run, the difference. Aaron Rodgers, 17 out of 22 for 164 yards, and both defenses playing at a high level. This is like the old NFC Central. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a throwback game here as far as these defense playing. Obviously, the second half of that of, the, of this uh, first half, Green Bay got on track. Aaron Rodgers, Eddie least Eddie Lacy. He had a big touchdown run in this game. And this is his longest run of the season, Rod. They have 44 yards. He's got 84 yards rushing in the game, averaging over eight a carry. Like we keep mentioning, they're going to need this guy, this kid. He's still young, second year, to be productive in the end of this season and into the postseason. But it's going to come down to Aaron Rodgers. I know he's feeling bad. He's been beat up a little bit today. But he is still the most valuable player in the NFL. Here in Tampa Bay, the Packers led 10-0 field goal by the Bucks right before the half, and they're ready to get the football. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan and Eddie Lacy with 10 rushes, 80-plus yards, and the 44-yard touchdown run as the second half begins and through the end zone, coming out to the 20-yard line, Tampa Bay. Well, many expected the Packers, after they were kind of blindsided in Buffalo, Ronde, to come in here and blow out these Buccaneers and it hasn't happened. Well, of course it hasn't happened because Tampa's been playing so well down the stretch here, particularly on defense. Now, the offense is something completely else. It's a hard to say a work in progress here in week it's 16. It's not progressing but it, very it's well not, or working. It's not, not much is working for this Tampa Bay Bucks offense. But in the second half of this game, I think they got to get back to running the football. Doug Martin has only touched the ball six times in, in the first half. Vincent Jackson and Mike Evans haven't had catchable balls. They're going to have to get something going here if they're going to stay in this football game. And a handoff to Doug Martin with nowhere to go. The Packer defense has played very well. Only one turnover in this game. That was the Bucs recovering an Aaron Rodgers fumble. Let's head down to the field and Jennifer. Well, Chris, Coach Mike McCarthy confirmed to me at halftime that Aaron Rodgers is not 100% right now. Number one, that cold is still bothering him. And secondly, he got rolled up early in this game and is still feeling the effects of those bumps and bruises. However, Coach says he does anticipate him finishing the game, Chris. 17 out of 22 for Rodgers and a couple of drops from the rookie Adams. As McCown throws and completes to the tight end who Luke Stocker fights hard to get across the 25-yard line. When the offense was clicking for McCown, if we can call it that, he at least put the ball in the area where his big receivers like Vincent Jackson or Mike Evans could, could get to it. Well, Josh, is, his entire career has had a tendency to want to hold the football. and he, he has such good athleticism, he's able to create plays out of the pocket. But we have good defense like Green Bay, guys, that, teams that fly around. They, he struggles, and he's been struggling so far today. On third down and four, McCown 
Well, he had a receiver who had a step in Sims, but he didn't deliver the ball where he could get to it. And the frustration continues. Packer defense forces a fourth down. I mean, I know you know you had to step up in the pocket to deliver this. Ball is just, just out of the reach of Charles Sims. Those are the ones that you got to complete. You know, you extend plays by stepping up in the pocket. And you expect when you get a free guy that you can hit him in the chest, and they just haven't been able to do it today. Josh McCown now five out of 16. Kanan moves it away. Randall Cobb, fair catch at the 32 of Green Bay. There's a funny new series coming to Fox in January. Backstrom, starring Rain Wilson as a brilliant but eccentric cop who solves the toughest crimes. You can catch the series premiere Thursday, January 22nd on Fox. You're brilliant and eccentric. There's your cameo. You have a cameo on that I, show. I don't first. know about brilliant, but eccentric. <laughs> Speaking of solving crimes, uh, this... Uh, Packer offense, as good as it's been, it's worth pointing out, we mentioned 41 points they average at home, 21 on the road, and so far they have 10 on the board against an improving Buccaneer defense. So they haven't been able to solve Tampa Bay's defense yet, but Rodgers has time here. And Lacey's been the star so far, fighting hard just to get maybe a yard. And Levante David impacted that point. He just shot through the gap. This guy, I love watching this guy play. I play with him, obviously, at the end of my career. He's right here. He's right here. Just watch him affect this 54. Watch him affect this run play, running through that gap, turning the whole play back, and allowing his teammates to make a play. That's what this defense is built on. and need more of that. Green 18! Green 18! That's Lacey again. Hit hard, spins, and then a swarm of Buccaneers shove him backward. Again, two plays back to back. You, if you're Lovey Smith, you're saying that's what the, that's the identity of my defense. It's not just one guy making tackles. Because, to be honest, a guy like Eddie Lacy, he's going to break some tackles. But when you see that swarm of red jerseys, then you know that your defense is playing fast. Watch this. Watch how many red jerseys affect the, this runner here. That's when you know you're playing good defense. Lacy with 13 touches today. Mike McCarthy likes him to get at least 20 a game. On third down and nine, Aaron Rodgers fires complete for a first down to Nelson, and he made that look easy. I'll tell you what, when he gets any kind of zone coverage, Jordy Nelson just knows how to settle in, and there is no more pinpoint accurate thrower than Aaron Rodgers, and perfect example of it right there. It's like, it's like you know, you've been at a, the bar, and you're sitting down with a buddy, and he, yeah, you want to play darts, and he just sits there and throws bullseyes all day. That's what it's like watching Aaron Rodgers play quarterback. Five catches for Nelson so far. Green 18! Green 18! Stacey again. Saw a combination of James Starks getting three carries and also three catches in the first half. Now, Aaron Rodgers said at the start of the year they wanted to go up-tempo, get more of 70 plays on offense. He said this year just hadn't worked out that way, more like in the low 60s in terms of number of offensive plays. We need team! But they produce points. Uh, that's on target to Cobb at the 40 for a first down. The, the timing of every route is great for this Green Bay offense, but... Aaron Rodgers talked to us about timing his fifth step or third step, or whatever the drop is, and, as a, and when he drops back the path with the combination of the route outside. What a great look at it right there. Hey, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. 5 0 Mike, Mayday. Mayday, ready, ready. Well, signal on the defensive line. Lacey. Gets a yard and then is corralled over there by the Packers sideline. Lacey, who is big, 5'11", 230, but seems to play bigger, run bigger. Well, he plays bigger, but he also has some nimble feet. We haven't seen it today, but man, when I watch this guy, I see so many spin moves. I mean, for a guy that's 230 pounds, to be able to be as, as nimble as he is is impressive. And the irritated eye from the contact lens, he was going without the lenses. Some said, well, would you try the goggles? that are prescription like Eric Dickerson wore. 
So he said, I don't, I don't need to go that route yet. Rodgers to Cobb. Randall Cobb down to the 22 of Tampa Bay. And Cobb, the leading receiver, number of catches in this game. Bucks are just playing cover two here, and there's two, there'll be two options. He has a shorter option and the deeper option, which was Jordy Nelson. But this offense is so efficient, and these guys understand what they're playing against. That the ball comes out, he gets immediately upfield. What should have been like a five-yard catch turns into like a 12-yard game. A gain of 15, and Rodgers over 200 yards passing today. We need 18. We need just. Starts is in. Stop short of the 21-yard line. And a head-on move into Alter on Werner. And he looks like he's shaking up. Moving over to the sideline. Isaiah Fry, who's been one playing in the secondary, inactive today with an ankle injury. Major Wright went on the injured list for Tampa Bay. Brandon Dixon comes in. Push it. We need Teed. We need you. On second and eight. Cobb again. All the way down inside the six of the Bucks. And they worked on Dixon. Yeah, you bring in Brandon Dixon in the game, and you know, Tampa's trying to do a good job holding the disguise here, but they know, Aaron knows that they're in man-to-man -man coverage, and what a great re release there by Randall Cobb on Brandon Dixon. And watch how efficiently this ball comes out. The mechanism of this throw is almost identical every single time he passes the football. That's why he's so accurate. Eddie Lacy back in at running back. Lacy down to the goal line. He did not get in. Two hundred thirty pounds, Chris. Bounces off tackles here. Then what? Oh, that's impressive <laughs> to be able to contort and control your body like that and it's not like a one-time thing with Eddie Lacy he does this all the time he is an impressive impressive running back extra lineman comes in on second and goal John Kuhn and Lacy in the backfield it's Lacy and he fights to the goal line again Deal kept out by that Buccaneer defense, which has been improving against the run all season long. You know, neither one of these teams are great against the run this, this entire year. But when Gerald McCoy is out of the lineup, you got, a, you got young Akeem Smith Spence in there, you got Daquan Bowers in there, Clinton McDonald as the beef of your defensive line. And they, they got to get off. They got to win the line of scrimmage. They've done it two plays in a row. Let's see if Aaron Rodgers and this offense try to run it in a third time here. Extra lineman for the Packers on third and goal. Inside handoff, Coon. And what a shot by the Bucks defense and Levante David. Bowers shaking up. Coon lost his helmet. But it's fourth down for the Packers. Well, they're not going to send out Crosby. Rodgers they're sending, is in, they're sending in four receivers. They're going to say, forget that three running plays here in a row. Let's use our guy's arm. Let's use the biggest asset on this football team to get a touchdown here on fourth down. I would not be surprised at all to see an all-out blitz here from Tampa. Aaron Rodgers, fourth down, tipped away. Trying to get to Cobb. There are no flags. You talk about sentinel moments of a football game or for a season for Tampa Bay. Drive all the way down the field for Aaron Rodgers. Jo Leonard Johnson makes a good play on fourth down. Something to build on for Tampa. Game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Burger King. Mix and match two large premium sandwiches for just $5 only at Burger King. By Sprint.
And by Taken 3. It all ends here, January 9th, only in theaters. We're seeing some of the best defense from the Buccaneers for the entire season. A goal line stand on fourth down after 13 plays, 7 minutes, 45 seconds, and 66 yards. The Packers got nothing out of it. Bucks on offense. Doug Martin barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Sam Barrington, part of a group shoving him back. Get down here in backed up situations. I know it was a great defensive stand by by Tampa Bay, but look for direct run, something quick to create some space. The last thing you want to do is have to punt from this situation if you're Tampa Bay. They need to get a couple more yards to get some comfort level and possibly get a first down here. Morgan Burnett, who is having an incredible game. Morgan Burnett is affecting the game as, as, as much as anybody right here. Safety down on the box. I don't know how many times today we've seen him come into the line of scrimmage and make great tackles. Doug Martin, if you'd have slipped that one, had a bunch of room out to the outside there. But Morgan Burnett, he talked about his leadership. One of the captains, the playoff captains elected here in Green Bay, having a great game, Kurt. From the two-yard line, those are the Packer defenders who have starred today. Kept the Bucks to a near field goal. McCown is in his own end zone. Firing for Evans, who makes the catch. And then the rookie dances out of bounds. I know it's a com completion here, but Clay Matthews wants <laughs> to crawl on the ground trying to affect this throw by... Josh McCown. That spin move is deadly. He's been doing it his entire career. And but Evans a, gets him out of jail yeah, there. What a throw and catch there by, by Josh McCown and Mike Evans. Give them some breathing Mark room Mark. here. Rain in the forecast for later this afternoon. It's Doug Martin again. Got down just short of the 20 yard line. At and least there's a light rain hitting the field here. At least that's the report from Jennifer Hale down on the sideline. At least so far in this second half, Chris, we're seeing a willingness here by Tampa to attempt to run the football. No, it's not effective. Not get the chunk yardage that we, that we saw last week from this unit. But if they don't establish that, they got no chance of using play action pass or these other things to affect this Packers defense. Second and eight. McCown has time to the tight end stocker, and that's going to be short of the first down. And Clay Matthews is all over the place. Well, this was a uh, situation. Getting the sub package, they bring in another wide receiver, and Clay Matthews is off the line of scrimmage now. He's not a rusher playing in space. We know he has this ability. He's a great tackler, form tackle. Big asset. It, this, this defense has been much better with that transition. Allow more athletes to get on the field. A brisk moving third quarter. Oh, we got the NASCAR defense in for the Packers. Put, trying to put pressure on third and four. The count has time, but he goes down. A leaping sack. Mike Neal. And the NASCAR pressure got to him. You mentioned NASCAR. It means they put all these athletes, these linebackers, some of them have their hand in the ground, and Mike Neal runs a long way. Logan Mankins doesn't have enough kick to get him off the track of his quarterback. You put that many guys out there that can rush the passer, good things are going to happen. That's a fourth sack of the game for this Packer defense. Micah Hyde standing inside the 45 of the Packers. Now he comes up. Near midfield, and here comes a flag as he goes down right away. Only 94 total yards for the Buccaneer offense, and we're almost through three quarters. Over 300 yards for Green Bay. During the turn, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 37. Ten-yard penalty, first down, timeout.
McCarthy shaking his head on the Sam Shield special teams play, but here comes Rodgers leading 10-3. Today, the winter solstice, shortest day of the year. In the NFL this year, playing games shorter, two minutes shorter by average. Even though the fouls or the penalties are up, they're being called briskly and officially executed by Dean Blandino in the home office. Cobb in the slot. Remember, they had him in the backfield last week against Buffalo at times. And he gets the football on first down up to the 40. Bradley McDougal up in that safety spot, making the tackle. They run that formation, four wide receiver sets, actually three wide receiver sets and a tight end in the game now. And Randall Cobb comes in, is, is the running back. He's in there now. They use this specifically to get him on matchups with linebackers in space. Get it there, probably do it again here. Rodgers on the move. Open is Nelson. Right at the first down marker. We'll see where they spot the catch and the initial push backward. And he did get the first down. And Rogers said, it looks, as you pointed out, sometimes like I'm moving around and guys are running, but we practice that as much as you can practice. And there are phases to when I run and where people go so we can find receivers. It's complete understanding of each other. It's, it's fun to watch, Chris. Cobb in the backfield now. Pass is caught at the 47 again by Nelson after the fake to Randall Cobb. Easy little throw and catch there. Showed blitz, did blitz. And Aaron Rodgers went right to where that blitz came from to Jordy Nelson. Just a simple little completion. To the line without a huddle. End of the quarter. He wants the ball. He's not going to get it. It's the end of the third quarter. And Rodgers. <laughs> is that a victory smile or what? If they win, they're in the playoffs. Green Bay leads after three in Tampa Bay. Rodney Barber, Chris Byers here, and from all of us in the NFL on Fox, an early Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you wherever you're watching. And sending out our best wishes to Bart Starr, the Packer great. Been ill under the weather lately. We're thinking of him and the Packer family. Lost the guard. Fuzzy Thurston passing away recently. The Packers trying to get into the postseason for the sixth straight year. Second down, Rodgers pass complete, and looks like Cobb's move after the catch is good enough to get him a first down. And the Packers next Sunday will host the Lions at Lambeau Field. Jimmy Clausen starting at quarterback for the Bears and leading the Lions. How about that? In New Orleans, the Falcons would take control of the South and Carolina winning. Carolina plays Atlanta next Sunday. On first and ten, this is caught as Devontae Adams, the rookie. By the way, for Randall Cobb, ten catches in this game. And that equals his career high. And Rodgers up to 250 passing yards. Well, he's making walking up and down this field look real easy right now. He mentioned before the quarter ended, they had four receivers on the field, or three receivers on the field, four receivers on the field, and a tight end, no running back. He's just dicing his stone coverage up. Bucks are going to try to play some man, but it's a tough prospect to get Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. Throwing on second and one, and back away. McDougal from his safety spot on Cobb. It'll be third down. Let's check in for a game break with Kurt Menefield. All right, you guys know what this game means in the NFC North. Jimmy Clausen, the new quarterback for the Bears, and new results. He's thrown two touchdown passes. That 20-yarder to Alshon Jeffrey gives them a 14-10 lead over the Lions. Chris, Rondé, and Jed. Thank you very much, Kurt. Why is it backup quarterbacks have so much success in Chicago? Jay Cutler to the bench. Lovey Smith shaking his head on that one. A 
after coaching Josh Go McCown and Cutler in Chicago for many years. On third and one, Eddie Lacy has got the first down. Tough running. It's at the 26 off Tampa Bay. And Lacy nearing 100 yards rushing today. See this O-line on this side of the O-line. Watch how much push they get when Eddie Lacy cuts this thing back. Open lane, nobody there to make the tackle. Really making that one yard look easy. There's a double six a carry today. Starks checks in as Lacy looks like he's hurting over there. Inside Coon and the fullback with cheers from the Packer fans here. Yelling Coon to the 15. How about that? You're on the road. You're, you're having a way home game, basically. You get that kind of reaction. But look at the power of Coon running through the tackle of Danny Lance Santa. Helmet came up. It didn't matter. He didn't even feel that. He didn't feel it. Of flip, 11. Flip, flip. 19. Just... Starts. Trying to wear down this Tampa Bay defense. You saw the rushing yard totals, and you thought you got the sense as Lacey tries to walk it off for Mike McCarthy. But that's something they wanted to work on heading into the postseason. Get that running game where you want it. Well. And Rodgers frustrated right now. Wouldn't let him spot, wouldn't let him come off the ball and run quick. Tampa Bay trying to substitute. Every time he does it, he's trying to get to the line of scrimmage and get a playoff before they get set. Starts. Yeah, to get back to that running the ball point. I said it in the open. I thought that this I think that this team could be the best rushing football team in the NFL if they they wanted to. They don't have to, obviously. The arm talent of Aaron Rodgers is spectacular. You want him to deliver the football. But Coach Lovey Smith told us that, that the one dynamic that's different with this team than when he was in Chicago playing against Green Bay is Eddie Lacy. And the, 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 the ability for them to have explosive runs with him is what makes them one of the most dangerous team, teams in football. Third down and four starts in the backfield. Aaron Rodgers starts, catches it and is jumped backwards. It's going to be fourth down. That's a big stand by that Buccaneer defense. Again, it's, you know, you talk about the mentality, and I've heard people describe it as Ben don't break with Lovey Smith's defense, but really it's just eliminating big plays. And when the short, the, the field gets shortened, it's to your advantage. And these guys, so far today, have ex exemplified exactly what Ben don't break defense means. Give them field goal attempts and not give up touchdowns. You saw the numbers today on Crosby. This will be from 25 yards away. And good. 13 to 3. Not in the end zone, but Rodgers gets more points for the playoff hopeful Packers. This game is sponsored by Visa Checkout. The easier way to pay online. Visa everywhere you want to be. By Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. And by the new Amazon Fire TV Stick, the most powerful media streaming stick. Tonight on Fox Sports Live, an exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Carmelo Anthony of the Knicks, plus a complete update on the NFL playoff picture. Randy Moss and Donovan McNabb give their points of view. Fox Sports Live tonight, 11 Eastern, on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Following the field goal, two out of three today for Crosby. Driving this over the head of Bobby Rainey. Tampa First Bay comes out on offense to the 20. They've only been able to muster a field goal so far. Tampa Bay on offense, 94 total yards. That's their lowest through three quarters this year. Their total, 217 yards. That was against Atlanta week three. The Packer defense has done its job. First down for Evans. 
who is put down right away by Tremont Williams. If the Packers win today and next week, they will open the playoffs at home. And being at home is big, given the offensive numbers, only 13 points on the board for Green Bay today. And the numbers scoring-wise for Green Bay on the road versus at home is, it's 20 points. It's, that's significant. So playing at home in Green Bay, you know what the weather's going to be nasty. But it's always, it always goes to their advantage. The count on second down, middle of the field, and incomplete. Vincent Jackson looked open, and he's frustrated. Well, they both should be frustrated because this play was executed exactly how you wanted it to be. But Vincent Jackson running away from the corner, and the count just delivers a poor ball. You don't want to use the too many words, that, bad words to describe this offense, but inept ineptitude comes to mind well, more often than not. And it's uh, it hasn't gotten better all year. There's too many excuses and reasons. They got to find better play at quarterback, got to find better play at offensive line. They got a long way to go, and it's showing today. On third and eight, McCown has time for Vincent Jackson. He's got a first down up around the 35-yard line, run backwards. Close again on a 1,000-yard receiving season. And Mike Evans also uh, closing in on that number. Well, he's getting a lot of pressure in his face right here. Josh McCown is it. And I give him credit right here. This is a heck of a throw and nice completion to Vincent Jackson. Guy right in his face. Hand is affected on the throw, but he's still able to get a completion. So maybe it's you know one special, spectacular, whatever play that galvanizes this offense here in the fourth quarter. We need to see something if they're going to make this a game, stay in this football game. Charles Sims trying to slip a tackle and does. But then three Packers gather him in at the 40-yard line. Peppers, Barrington. Good job by the Packers there rally. I mean, that, when that ball was let go, it looked like Charles Sims had a ton of room out there to make people miss. He had one blocker in front and only one defender to make the tackle. But this unit rallied around that play and held it to five yards. That could have been a big explosive play. Second down five from the Tampa Bay 42. They trail by 10. Just over eight minutes to play. Balls out. Looks like the Bucks recovered the loose football, but Peppers came in and hammered McCown and forced the fumble. And coming up with it for Tampa Bay, Josh Allen. I just watched Peppers work on Josh Allen, and that is a mismatch of epic proportions. One of the greatest rushers in the history of the game against, you know, a rookie from Louisiana Monroe. We talked about the problems up front. They got serious problems. And seeing them compete against guys like Julius Peppers and Clay Thomas, or Clay Matthews, you tell how far they still need to go. Third and 17. And there's another one. It is Clay Matthews. And the Packer fans, and there's probably as many Packer fans, if not more, than Buccaneer fans here. And the offense fails again for Tampa Bay as the Green Bay defense comes up big. They're coming out of your screen here and just runs a little stunt game with 96. Just Logan Mankins and DeMar Dotson don't communicate it well. You don't get many easier sacks than that. Fair catch called for Mike Gahai. There's a flag down. He steps up across the 39 of Green Bay. During the kick, holding receiving team number 32. 10-yard penalty. Timeout. And the special teams malfunctions continue, but the Packers are in control here, 13-3. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Cricket Wireless. Something to smile about. This is the 20th season of the Buccaneers being owned by the Glazer family. Rondé Barber with Chris Myers here. Rondé, part of that Super Bowl team for the Bucs, but this group far from that, trying to win their first home game this season and their third of the season. Green Bay knocking on the playoff door. And the 
Kuhn again. And there goes Kuhn. In his longest run of the season, an 11-yarder in the last drive. We've seen Eddie Lacy have his longest run of the season. And the Packer ground game is churning. Does anybody embody Green Bay more than Kuhn does? And at this point in the game, there's six and a half minutes left, but Green Bay will be squarely into their four-minute offense. It's all clock management now. Turn and hand the ball off to your guys. And to know Eddie Lacy is on the sideline still. See a lot of Starks and Kuhn here as this game finishes out. But... Green 18! Green 18! Rodgers to throw goes underneath. That's his tight end, Corliss. He looked downfield at Jordy Nelson, but he decided to go to Corliss. And checking the scoreboard. Remember, the Lions are already in the playoffs because of that Eagle loss Saturday night to the Redskins, and they will go to Lambeau Field next Sunday. Atlanta, if they hang on and win in New Orleans, and then Carolina leads Cleveland, then Atlanta and Carolina face off next weekend, a head-to-head -head showdown for that exciting NFC South title. I know you said that sarcastically. Hey, squarely in chief. You win a division, you get in. That's how it works. Five and a half and counter. Starts will be thrown backwards. Ellie Lanzana, who we haven't mentioned much, but has played all three linebacker positions, and has been a valuable performer for this defense. He's a solid player. His versatility, obviously, he played Mike last week, playing Sam this week. He's a guy that they'll, they'll want. You, when you're evaluating talent these last two games, he's a guy that you like what you're seeing. And the Tampa 2, which you helped make famous, and Lovey Smith, he called this defense. We're not quite there with this group. I, he said, we're not Tampa 2. We're not even Clearwater 2 or St. Pete 2. That's what he told you. <laughs> Lovey with a good sense of humor. Yeah. Green 19! Green 19! Here comes a flag. The left game, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. You know, there's elements of this defense that will make it Tampa 2, but they got a long way to go before they can actually call it what we did back in the day, Tampa 2. That's where that tongue-in-cheek response from Lovey came from. We're not quite Tampa. We're more like Clearwater right now. Well, I mentioned Aaron Rodgers winning eight out of ten meetings against the Lovey Smith and that defense in Chicago over the years, and he... You know, he's familiar with it. It's, it's tough, but Rodgers has it figured out, and he has the running game today to go with it. Somebody with a high-pitched voice here. Green 19! Blitz! Rodgers to Cobb! Randall Cobb is all the way down to the Tampa Bay 20. Well, Tampa checked into that. Pressure and they knew they had a free runner at Aaron Rodgers and he again took a shot But when you do this you put somebody on an island and Randall Cobb Absolutely smoked him. You see him up here in the top of your screen. They're all communicate. You see him move the back for protection purposes But one miss and you get an explosive play Randall Cobb a career high 11 catches over 130 yards Picked up 30 on that one. 319! 319! From the 20, inside Kuhn again. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Those 131 receiving yards for Cobb are also a career best in a single game. He already has. He came into this game running with career numbers in yards and touchdowns. As we have an injured bucket here, that's Golson, William Golson, who at times was going to spy Aaron Rodgers through the course of this game. Green Bay leads, and they're on the move. Packers at the 20-yard line. Mike McCarthy in his ninth season as the Packers head coach said this is the best offensive line he's had here. They showed it today, working the ground game and protecting Aaron Rodgers, who was hit early, one sack officially. But since then, he's had time. He's had this game in control. And Eddie Lacy with 99 rushing yards. Said it was the most consistent. Said their work ethic is beyond reproach. They said this is a team that deserves it, man. They do all the right things. Rodgers for Jordy Nelson. 
He caught it. Did he stay in? Yes, the official says. Did not get into the end zone, but made the catch around the one-yard line. Jordy Nelson working on Jonathan Banks. Man, what a catch. Goodness, man. I tell you. Using all of that six foot three frame. And what about the feet? You know, that was great Very well coverage done. there. Jonathan Banks got his head around. Had an opportunity to play the ball, but the placement of it, getting his hands on, on it, and then feet inbounds. This guy's a special player. A 19-yard gain, so he's over 100 yards, along with Cobb's career high day. They came in adding to their 1,000-yard receiving seasons as a tandem. They have a timeout, it looks like. First charge timeout. So the Packers will use it here. After a terrific grab by Nelson, sets the Packers up. Today's game is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Ruled a catch on the field. Mike McCarthy may have been wondering if that Jordy Nelson grab was good enough for a touchdown. It was ruled a catch and then out at the one-yard line. It was a Packer timeout. He, he never had to challenge or decided not to. Two timeouts remain for Green Bay. First and goal. Eddie Lacy in it running back. Rodgers. End zone. Low throw and knocked away. He's trying to get it to Corliss. Rodgers has been kept out of the end zone today and last week in Buffalo. 35 touchdown passes this season leading the NFC. Only five interceptions. They've been down here three on three occasions and just in this half, Chris, this game could be a blowout right now to be honest with you. But the Bucks defense has stood up on those occasions. We'll see if they can stand up again here on a goal to go situation from the one yard line. Rodgers has to flip it with pressure coming and a little shovel pitch incomplete for Richard Rodgers. Michael Johnson, who got to him early in the game, was after him here. And they desperately, or seemingly desperately want a touchdown pass here for Aaron Rodgers, bringing four receivers on the field right now. You wonder why they just don't, they've been running it so well, and they didn't run it on fourth and one when they went for it at the goal line. You know, it's it's not going to matter. This game is obviously out of hand. His eighth 300-yard passing game this year, 40th of his career. And there's four receivers again on third and goal. Aaron Rodgers ends on caught. Jordy Nelson touchdown Packers. Number 36 for Rodgers, number 13 for Jordy Nelson. Don't know that there, if there's a relief that he got a touchdown pass finally in two weeks. This is the same route that they ran down on the goal line that Leonard Johnson broke up, but Jordy just takes that quick little step outside, freezes little Leonard Johnson in his stance. It's a nice, easy delivery for a touchdown for Jordy Nelson. It's a, as if Aaron Rodgers, not even Hans and Franz, would have denied him on that drive. He was going to get the ball in the end zone, darn it. And he did. You can hear they're chanting, go pack, go here in Tampa Bay. The official review says, yeah. And the extra point by Mason Crosby. Two forty-five to go in the fourth quarter. The Packers get a little bit closer to the playoffs. Leading the NFL now, Des Bryant has company. Jordy Nelson with 13 receiving touchdowns. And Aaron Rodgers overcoming a cold. Getting banged up in the opening quarter from the pass rush to get the Packers in the end zone for the second time today. Bobby Rainey bringing it out for the first time on a kickoff. He gets up across the 20-yard line. 2.40 to go. He looks relaxed. And happy holidays to all the canine lovers out there. Holiday season of the Packers on the verge of celebrating a trip to the playoffs. For Aaron Rodgers, those 31 completions today, three off his career high. The Bucks now trailing by 17. 
Cut. Josh McCown is going to go down. The pass rush today, that's seven sacks by the Packers and give Jones and Matthews a share on that. Well, just pure domination. You see Dayton, jo Dayton Jones and Clay Matthews just kind of falls into that sack because of Jones' pressure. It's just more of the same for Tampa. The quarterback and offensive line problems glaring. Charles Sims gets up to the 20, nearing the two-minute warning here. Tampa Bay has all three of its timeouts. Two minutes to go. The Packers are two minutes away from getting to the postseason. Let's see, we have a timeout called. 30-second timeout. Okay, at 2.01. And this gives us an opportunity, whether it's the first pick overall, it was the Bucks' timeout right before, so we'll still have the two-minute warning. It's obvious that they're going to go after a quarterback, whether a trade or through the draft. Don't be so convinced that it's Mariota for general manager Jason Light and Lovey Smith, but it's an area that they will have to address. What first, about Jameis Winston if he declares? Yeah, first-year general manager from Jason Light. He's got a, got a tough road ahead of him. They, this, they made some free agent acquisitions this offseason. Not many of them have panned out. But the biggest decision on the overhaul of this offense has got to be the quarterback. Whether it's Mariota, whether it's Jameis Winston, or whether they, like you said, find a, a trade partner. There's some guys that are going to be free agents out there, but the position needs to be fixed. They, they, they do not have the right guy on the roster right now. Counts pass completed to Mike Evans, the seventh overall pick. Jason Light and the Bucks hit a home run on that draft selection. You saw they added time, and now we've gone to the two-minute warning officially with each team having two timeouts. Green Bay, a minute 58 away from the playoffs. Clay Matthews, 10 sacks this season from Agora Hills, California. What a game he's had. Fourth double sack, uh, I should say double sack double-digit sack season of his career. 33. 33's Mike. 33's and the Packer 33. defense on its game today. The count hit as he throws, and that is incomplete. Let's go back to, and there's more of the pressure, not only drafting a quarterback, but ownership, the Glazer family, supportive of Lovey Smith. They knew they'd have to take steps backward before going forward as you see scores from around the league now the Packers winning here but they'll have to win next week and they will get to host a playoff game against the Lions bonus coverage coming up of whatever game is the most interesting or competitive for you to watch our expanded coverage on the NFL on Fox now second and ten for McCown that's intercepted he flipped it in the air Dayton Jones Inside the 15, a Packer takeaway. Well, to add yet a, another nail in the coffin, not only on this game, but on what's been a miserable season offensively for Tampa. Elliott puts the pressure on here, and then Jones. It's just ill-advised, Chris. There's no reason to do that. Josh McCown was brought in to be a smart player. We saw this in week one. We had the week one game where he had two interceptions that looked just like that, and he does it again. So, yes, as you were talking about Lovey Smith and what he needs to do on this offense, I think ownership is willing to ride with them, but they're going to have to overturn, or overturn this roster again next year and find some players on offense. And start with an offensive coordinator, and if you can find a guy that has the ability. Remember, Aaron Rodgers had to sit and wait behind Brett Favre and the handoff for the Packer organization the championships over the years the Super Bowls and they're back into the postseason as Mike McCarthy will move up by himself second on the all-time victory list of Packer coaches ahead of Vince Lombardi and behind the great Curly Lambeau and Aaron Rodgers finally gets his win here in Tampa he had two losses here early in his career but there was really no question today. I know it wasn't a huge point explosion for Green Bay. It actually kind of marries what they've done on the road this year. But this game was clearly in their hands the entire day. And Aaron Rodgers, that offense was very good. And important next week at Lambeau, if they can beat the Lions. Remember, they lost to Detroit earlier this year. But if they beat the Lions, they will host a playoff game. 
And Aaron Rodgers told me this reminds him a little bit of the Super Bowl team in the sense that there's a controlled hunger and that the approach is the same. In other words, the work ethic, the attitude for this Green Bay team. And they've dealt with the success of this season very well, and that's exactly what he said that Super Bowl team had, and it's very similar now. Our broadcast associate, Mike Strack, Tavis Strand, associate director, Michael Frank, Mike Burks. Some of the names we've talked about, Tom Lynch and Ernest Bauer, Buzz Schwing, Eric Norberg, Wyatt Anderson, Rob Levy, Don Vermillion, Pat Caballero, Lisa Hansen, Ty Yoey, all an important part of our broadcast on the NFL on Fox. It's Rodgers' revenge after what happened last week on the road. The Packers are in the playoffs as they win here in Tampa Bay. A place that has been tough on Aaron Rodgers in the past. Green Bay with a 20-3 decision. We'll have more and expanded coverage coming up.